Welcome, welcome to another episode of The School Podcast. We are here once again at Education Forum in London and I've got a very special guest and I really had to twist his arm after our conversation to make this happen. And I would say he kind of looks like my long lost brother too. So uh, Omar, thank you, for, thank you for being here. You're welcome. So Thanks for inviting me. Cheers. Let's get straight into it. Um, you're on holiday and somebody says, what do you do? How would you describe the work that you do? So, um, I would say I'm an academic. Okay. Um, but first of all, I'm a, I'm a teacher. So I've, that's what I started off, like just a teacher first. And then we added to that research and then lately consultation work. Okay. So, so I'm a research, academic researcher um, consultant. So and I currently work at the University of West London. Uh, before that, I was based uh, internationally in the Middle East wow. uh, for about eight years. And uh, yeah, I'm back again in, in, in England. So what type of, what do you do at University West of London? So I am a module leader and um, I'm a senior lecturer at University of West London. So I'm a module leader, I teach a variety of subjects um, and I do a research work in uh, mainly uh, virtual reality, mixed reality, immersive reality, smart cities, and for the past two years, we've incorporated AI into our research. And I do work with my uh, previous supervisor, uh, we were, um, um, which is part of my um, PhD thesis that I completed in, in obtaining my PhD, then we continued the research uh, now, and we've, we've, we've added to it some other topics as well. So um, for the idiots in the room, what does all of that mean, virtual reality? What is all of that stuff? Well, especially after the pandemic, um, it's, 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 it's a lot of institutions, including all um, academic establishments, they, they transformed their work into remote learning and remote education has become, has become really more popular. So uh, my research focuses on, on in simple words, it, how to demonstrate ideas, notions, topics, marketing for product remotely for people who are interested in trying, in buying, in participating, or trainee, online trainees. Literally, they want to learn how to use a software, a program. We design the virtual atmosphere where they can practice and they can literally test the device or whatever the, the, the a virtual lab it could be in, in our case. And then they can test all these devices just like they are physically available. So how long have you been into teaching for? Um, I started teaching in 2010. Yeah, it's about 15 years. Okay, so. About 15 years. What yeah. you teach, what your research is, it seems like a very fast paced industry. It is changing, it is changing. What's every been some of the biggest changes over that kind of 14, 15 years of teaching? It's social media, the introduction of social media really? that really impacted our research. And now we got uh, um, adaptivists to this, especially to, to, to um, using lately AI, for example, integrating AI into our research, um, uh, where, you can, where you can use it, not just as a bot or as a robot, but it's as like an adaptive engine, like, a, yeah, like sort of your personal coach that will guide you through the process. Mm. And how do you see like AI impacting education? not just in university, but also potentially from primary school and up. Anyway, AI is coming to stay. It is definitely coming to stay, so you might as well use it as a tool. Use it on to your side rather than just, you know, um, um, distracting people away from it. Because at the beginning, I remember a couple of years back when ChatGPT and all other AI software start coming to the market, we were really anxious about students mm. using them. And we were really not pushing them away, but trying to stop them from doing that. And not the case anymore. The case is it's, it's, it's a tool. It's coming here. It's coming to stay as well. We might as well use it to your benefit. However, we teach them or we need to teach them how to use it ethically. Give me an example of using it unethically. Is that a word? Yeah, that unethical. Word? Unethical yeah. AI. Uh, well, um, so... I'll just get into practical thing straight away. I'm, I'm a very practical person. Yeah. Um, you, have, you have a program to design a website, for example, 
And we teach that theoretically first. We give you a theoretical part where you master that. Then we move into the lab and you start practicing the language that will help you design the website. If you want to use it unethically, you just go to the chat GBT and you just type in what sort of website you would like to mm. use with some simple command prompts and it will tailor it really to your needs and it will produce that code. Then you just need to copy that code, run it into a text editor, any text editor, and then it will be compiled into a website that runs on a different browsers. Mm. That is an unethical way of using it. Whereas you can use it to help you in explaining part of the functionalities that you need to understand. If I'm asking you, please, could you just design a JavaScript code that will help you to do some um, event-driven programming? When you click on something, it has to be responsive to the user who is, who, mm. who's used the prompt. Then, then you can use that to help you understand the concept, and then you need to still to design the work itself. Mm. That's what it, what it differs from, from ethical and unethical use of AI. I feel like you've got a very positive, um, positive mindset towards AI, and I still feel like a lot of people are still kind of unsure um, of where it may lead. Is there any like concerns you have about AI and the direction it can head? If we use it in the right way, I think, uh, from my own experience, it is not going to replace people, so it doesn't have that mm. really negative and that's impact. That's a big concern. What people yeah, talk about? Yeah, it's not. About, no, isn't no, it? no, 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 no. Really, you can you can work just like another colleague who who knows and understand everything. Mm. It's just like when I go to my experienced colleague in research and I ask them, how can I do this and this and that? Okay, I've got ChatGPT or any other yeah. AI software that will help me to do that work for me. Mm. But I'm not going to really completely substitute it and, and just replace, replace uh, the current staff that I have. It could be in certain areas. I can't guarantee because we don't know that as well. It depends on the advancements of AI because it keeps changing and it keeps like producing and creating things that you never thought a couple of years back this would be possible. Yeah. So it depends on, on the advancement of AI. How, how is that going to be like? And then we will be able to cope or not with that. How are you finding your teaching at the university? Because I guess many of your students, when they were probably in year 10, year 11, mm -hmm. they probably went through the whole COVID and yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. Have you seen a shift in mindset, maybe men mental, physical? I don't know. Has there been a difference in the students that you're seeing there nowadays? Is, there is a shift. It's not just a, in a mind, especially the, the new generations yes. are really into into technology, into devices more than more than my generation. Yeah. Um, um, for example, like um, nowadays, every every student is more familiar and is more um, happy to use their mobile phones to do, execute, implement uh, everything on their mobile phones rather than doing it in real, in real life, in real life scenarios. It's like a coming world, to the blackboard right? and do something, write something, or even raise your hand and answer. They'd rather have like, I don't know, a link that they could share or they could scan and then they apply the votes or whatever answer I ask them to, you know, to reply to me. Especially I, I try to keep my, lecture, my lectures as engaging as possible, because that's the main point. Otherwise, why would you turn mm. up to a university, to a, a lecture theater, and you're not just, just sitting there looking at your phone? And again, that could be used in our favor, just like AI. We can just adapt mobile apps, especially nowadays, everything is a mobile app and is available on, on, on Android or mm. on uh, any other phone system, uh, operating system. And you can just use that into your advantage. So we, we have to adapt. We have to adapt for the generations that they have shifted their, their, their ideas and their mindset into using phones more a lot, more into social medias um, um, and, and AI. AI, but AI and phones are making the younger generation lazy. Mm. Is there any truth to that, that statement? <laughs> uh, I got to speak my mind about this. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be very honest with you and I think yes it is. Okay. Yes it is making them a bit lazy, yeah. It's, it's about mindset and it's about how you're being raised. Because I use phones all the time and yeah. I use AI most of the times, but I know where to stop, I know when to draw the line, I know when I have to disconnect from this and go back to reality and just do things the way that I was doing them five, six years ago. However, yeah. do, I, do I need that? Do I need to continue doing this? Or is completely technology going to replace this in my life? 
So far, I don't see it replacing. I feel like we've got a couple of examples, though, and this is what I talked about to the young teenagers and stuff that I work with, and Dave's been there as well, and a lot of the stuff that I do in sixth form in colleges, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, but sir, I've, I've done five job applications and I've not had one phone call back. I said, yeah, because you've done what everybody else has done. And like, what do you mean? You've done the, you sent the application, you've attached a CV, yeah. and now you're like, the work is done. How many of you have now picked up the phone, called that company, and let them know that you sent the job application? or who's also gone onto LinkedIn and found somebody who worked in that company who sent them a message. Yes. Who's, who's gone above and beyond because doing things like that is what's going to separate you from everybody else. Yes. Those real, you know, like what we've had today, we've had a real conversation. We shook each other's hand, we spoke a little bit before I even offered you onto the podcast. But there's that real human interaction which I do feel is slightly missing nowadays. Um, but I feel like the ones who could use AI, use technology to their advantage, but also understand that this is also necessary, are the people who are going to excel and go really, really far. Um, do you feel like university teaches that enough, though? That like, real human element of like, um, what you need to be successful, right? It's not just about intelligence. It's not so just about getting a first or getting a doctorate. Yeah, what yeah, else yeah, do yeah. you... I've tried, I've tried both worlds. So, so, okay. so I've tried the classical way of learning and teaching. And now I've tried the, the, the more advanced way, which is including some part of it was remote education yeah. and remote delivery. And to be honest with you, in my opinion and in my experience, the short you know, yeah. experience of 15 years in the industry, I still believe that face-to-face -face learning cannot be replaced. Mm. It cannot be replaced. The, 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 the amount, especially for someone who's willing to engage, for somebody who wants to learn, then then face-to-face -face education is, 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 the, is the perfect delivery of, of any kind of notions into you and, and uh, to explain anything. I think that's, that's the best way. And uh, there is no harm in using technology. There is no harm in being, you know, advanced in, in or excelling in, in using social media. It just really makes the whole world in your fingertips. Mm. And it makes you, you know, accessible to so many other resources where 10 years back they weren't, they weren't possible. So it will just, you just, you just add it to your arsenal of, of yeah. really, you know. So um, what would you say to any teachers at the moment, in primary, secondary, college, university, who are still a bit kind of standoff-ish mm. over like AI, what, what advice would you give them? Not really, embrace it. Just embrace, embrace it. it. Embrace it, learn about it. There is always a new, um, um, whether you pay or free resources available everywhere about how to use it ethically. I think when you use it ethically, <coughs> it will be a, an amazing tool. And an what happens if tool. they don't decide to use it? What, what will happen? They will just be like, uh, They'll be forced to they at will, some point. They will be, it's not just forced to, at some point they're going to be forced to and they're going to be lacking behind for yeah, so many things. You. So many things, like so many th you, you talked about the example of somebody who's applying on uh, using, using um, um, the system, the normal yeah. system to apply for jobs. I think AI does a tremendous job in, in really getting you there and showing you, but still the core ideas and the main ideas, it depends on you. You've got to write the whole idea mm. and you can just ask uh, AI to help you, to assist you with polishing it, to make it a little bit more, you know, tailored. Yeah. And, th and, that's, and that's where any tool in life comes, comes, comes uh, the role of it. Prime example, obviously this podcast is slightly different, but sometimes when we have a longer podcast, um, I will help, I use ChatGPT to pretty much help structure the, the podcast questions. Yes. Whether I refer back to them or not, that's the, the, the skill that I've mastered whilst doing the podcast. Right. But they've still helped me with the preparation. Yeah. And it's kind of supported me in, in creating, I guess, the n number one educational podcast in the world, thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but all, all jokes aside. I'm glad to be part of it. <laughs> thank you. So obviously we don't have too much long and we've got a few others coming in. But I'm curious to know, if you could sit down with any one person, dead or alive, um, they don't have to be famous. What one person would you sit down with? That was the question you were scared of. Right? Yeah. Um, could be any, dead or alive, you said. Anyone. Oh. Could even be a family member, but don't feel pressure because you have to. <laughs> I'll keep that to myself. All right. That's right, I'll keep that to myself. But, but definitely there is a, there is a, a, a person. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to share that person, but any other person. Any other person? Just give me a, somebody famous. My dad. Your dad? Yes. <laughs> well, your dad famous? No, no, it's not really oh, famous, okay. but it's just for me. Yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Why yeah, your dad? Yeah. Why your dad? What is, what, what, what is like... Yeah, why would you want to sit down with your dad? 
it's so much, so much um, wisdom. Wisdom. And so many lessons to learn. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it helped me to become the man I am today. That's amazing. Yeah. And if you had a magic wand and yeah. you could change one thing in education, yes. It doesn't just have to be university, it could be anything. What would that one thing be? Shall I be honest about that? Yeah. Of course. Uh, two things, actually. There's not one thing I'm going to change. Is that all right? Uh, are we allowed to? Yeah, allowed to, uh, or one? Uh, it's a university okay, lecture. Okay, number one, I want to force students to come in. How? I don't want them to stay at home. Okay. And just, um, I don't know, shall I say leniency? Mm. We should be a little bit more, not harsh, and be understandable for their, for their circumstances, but there is... I think what you're saying it is, is it, shouldn't, like it shouldn't be optional. It, it is optional anyway. But it is optional. But, but it shouldn't be. They've taken it too far. Yeah. They've taken it too far, and I think we need we need to bring that. You know. Um, but that's even started in like secondary school as well. So like now it's yeah. it's not it, it isn't optional. But there's a there's a culture somewhat in education that it feels a little bit optional. Or the students who don't show up is like, oh, well, I've got a bit of a cold, so I'm not coming in today. Yeah. And it's like, nah, it's not good. Yeah. Before we used to force ourselves. Yeah. We used to even come, even though we're not feeling well. We used to come. Yeah, exactly. Because we used to have some form of responsibility that that's a lot of people. It's not just for other people or to to prove to other people. It's for us. We mm. understood it from an early age I don't know why we understood from an early age that this is our future mm. and we've got to look after it amazing I'm sure that if any students now at home who's not feeling well they don't want to come to Dr. Omar's lecture they're not really interested but they feel a little bit under the weather if you tell them there is 50 pounds for you when you yeah, come in they go. will come in you they always mind. And there's, a, like, there's that um, quote you always find the time energy and focus for what you truly value yeah and sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah you you, you yeah. do what you prioritize. So, so and what's uh, option two? You said there's two things you management. Explain management. Um, I really liked the the saying that um, Dr. Diana, I think, mm. in, in 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 her earlier podcast that we, we we attended today. Yeah. When she said that, I think the burdens, when you when you create burdens, uh, shouldn't really shut me down. It should be just like distributed equally and. And it makes me more productive. Mm. Uh, I think not just me, not just my personal experience, but in many, many places, I've seen some colleagues where they join the establishment and they come on a very, very, um, a lot of fire burning inside on a high intensity. They want to really do this. They want to really do that. They want to be part of this, collaborate with this. And then after a couple of years, things start just slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And there's not entirely, it's just because of them or because of their, their, their own private circumstances. It could be some of, some of it, it could be that, for some personal reasons. However, I would rather really, um, don't want to say I blame, but I could say the management who they work under, it's really been sort of they're just pushing a lot of things at the same time. Mm. Yeah, so like it's, it. it's really, it, it, it drains you, sort of drains you. So you start doing just the bare minimum rather than excelling. Got you. Yeah. And what's next for you? Next for me is to keep uh, climbing the ladder mm. of academia. So that's what I want. <laughs> How? What, what, wh Just you by doing your... more research, yep. trying to bring more money into my establishment yep. through grants, through collaborative work, projects. Amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, just, you know. Hopefully Amazing. one day we'll sit down here and have another podcast as well, a professor. We want to yeah, come as to you, professor, for as sure. A professor. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, guys. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. brilliant. All no. good? <laughs> there you go, guys. There is another episode of the School Podcast. As you've seen today, we have been doing some short and sharp podcasts. Uh, unfortunately, they're not as long as I wish they would be, um, but it's the, the name of the game. So do all the good stuff. Like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Cheers. My name is Sean Lord and I help deliver the Girls Growth Programme, a programme that helps deliver impact for teenage girls, ensuring that they're happier and healthier on their school journey. With a big focus on relationships, friendships, body image, self-esteem, mental health and mindset. I'm Natalie, I'm one of the leaders for our Girls Growth Programme, where we discuss important issues such as self-esteem, diet, exercise and confidence. Think of three unhealthy habits that you have for yourself at this moment in time. And when you don't get enough sleep, it's harder to regulate your emotions and small problems can seem much bigger than they are. Exercise isn't just about looking good or staying fit, it's vital for your mental health. So get in touch today to get the support that your girls need now.